Well, joining us now from Toronto is Anne Fitzgerald. She's director of the Balsillie School of International Affairs and professor at Wilfrid Laurier University's Political Science Department. Great to have you with us. Um, our correspondent there saying that uh, Ethiopians seem to be very excited about voting in these elections. However, we do know that voting's been delayed in some areas, that it's been boycotted in others, claims of opposition intimidation uh, in some parts. What do you think all of this means for Abiy Ahmed's promise of democracy for Ethiopia? Thank you very much. Um, I think it's a great show of democracy already that we're seeing multi-party uh, politics with transparent uh, ballot boxes that we're seeing access to um, media campaigning. We're seeing debates between political parties, those participating in the election that we've never seen in the past before. And this is this is extremely important for a country as diverse as Ethiopia. And when I say diversity, we're talking about over 80 distinctly different ethnic groups. Of course, there's relationships between that and Ethiopia as a country of mixed heritage and intermarriages, but with distinctly different languages and dialects as well. So this is very important, not just for multi-party politics, but also for accountability, checks and balances, um, uh, people to stand up for whatever government is voted in, and uh, demand ac accountability for government policies and decision making. Um, this, so, you this know, is and one after thing we saw... Sorry to interrupt you. On the on the uh, on the issue of ethnic divisions, this is something, of course, that Abiy Ahmed uh, has tried to reduce. He formed a new political party. He wants to uh, reduce the number of ethnic divisions. Uh, are the, how far are these divisions still a, a determining factor in Ethiopia? Well, I don't think we should be talking about ethnic groups and ethnic divisions here because this this election is for the people. This election is for the country. Uh, yes, we've seen an ethnic federalist model lead to parties form along uh, ethnic lines, but there there is uh, even for a region like Aromia, where um, uh, a couple of parties have boycotted the uh, the election. Three, um, we're still seeing a registration of approximately, I think, 18 million in Aromia, which out of the uh, approximate eligible population to vote uh, of 20 million is a very, very high uh, percentage of people registered. So, um, you know, I, th I think we should be looking at this election as an election for the people and not as an election for different ethnic groups. OK, well, one priority for the people is peace and stability. Uh, that is one of the big challenges facing Ethiopia, particularly regarding what's going on in Tigray. Is that something that any government, and we expect it to be Abiy Ahmed's government, is that something that any government in Ethiopia is going to be able to deliver? Well, I think what we've seen over the past month in particular, uh, the uprising towards U.S. foreign policy in the country, the uprising towards uh, misinformation and disinformation across the media, um, has actually had uh, uh, um, an unintended consequence of unifying the people. We also saw the, the new regional, uh, the head of the regional government of Tigray make a very heart-wrenching statement yesterday on Arts TV about uh, responding to the question that the, um, that the interviewer posed, which was, you know, what can the Ethiopian people do for their brothers and sisters in Tigray? And, um, and that was received with a standing ovation. It was seen uh, by many people across the country. Look, there's no doubt that this is not a perfect election. Um, but it is a step in the right direction towards um, multi-party politics, accountability, and the widening of political space. We will see another uh, round, a second round of the election happen, I think, on September 6th. This will allow uh, those constituencies um, in Shoa, in, in the Somali region, uh, importantly in the Tigray region, Amhara, to come to the ballot box for a second round, so the, 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 the decision on what government takes a seat will not be decided until that second round. So, um, you know, we've seen a hundred different international observers, uh, despite the efforts by some organizations not to send them, we've seen over a hundred thousand 
uh, local election observers and monitors. Civil society has been involved. There's been debates that we have never, ever seen before. Security is going to be a huge issue on the agenda. And whatever government takes a seat, um, we'll have to really lay down a roadmap that will prioritize reconciliation, dialogue, and the rebuilding of the uh, region of Tigray, the, the, the um, uh, support for reconciliation and national dialogue to other conflict-affected communities and um, areas which have seen large-scale internal displacement. Yeah, you're quite right. Second round of voting uh, in some areas on September the 6th. Um, thank you very much indeed. Great to speak with you, Anne Fitzgerald there.